Hello, everyone, and welcome to another bite sized talk. With me today is again Marcel uh, from Secure Labs, and he is going to talk about how to use Wave containers. Thank you very much, and off to you. Hello, everyone. It's, it's a pleasure to be here again. Let's talk about Wave containers today. So, I'm going to share with you my browser so we can discuss a few things. Let me see what's the right page to share. Okay. Can you confirm you can see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay. So web containers, the subtitle says next generation container provisioning for data analysis. So what's the thing? So containers were created. Uh, I think the first, the first time I got into the Linux kernel was 1998 or something like this. So it's been a long time the idea of having containerized applications exist. But it took a while before, maybe 29, I think. Uh, so it took a while before it really got to us a nice application, nice package, and very clear how to use it. So I think around 2012, 2011 was when Docker came up with all these nice applications and nice examples and really kicked off, right? At the right time, at, at the same time, around 2012, 2013, we had some pipeline orchestrators technologies emerging. So it was very really nice that at the same time when people were trying to fix this reproducibility crisis in science, we had a technology that allowed us to, to containerize applications, right? So most of these pipeline orchestrators like Nextflow, SnakeBig, and many others, they at some point start to try to incorporate Docker, but not only Docker, other container technologies to make sure you could isolate some, some tasks, right? So the idea of a container, is ju just what the name says, is to put stuff inside a container. So you can put your dependencies, your libraries, your software, uh, maybe you can move your data inside so that you have a container, like a box, which is very isolated from everything, from everything else, and you can do stuff inside. This means that I can move my container to your machine, and you can try to do the same thing I did, and everything points to the fact that it's probably going to be the same thing, like the output, because everything is isolated in a way that you have this reproducibility, right? So because of that, a lot of different projects and fields, they, they start using heavily using containers. However, at some point, we saw that there were some limitations. And Paolo decided, like Paolo Di Tommaso from Sequera, the creator of Textflow, he saw an opportunity to, to, to create technology that will empower us to use containers even better, right? So that's containers. So that's wave containers, right? The next generation of container provisioning for the advanced. But provisioning means like building, deploying, delivering, and all these things related to containers. So I'm going to move throughout, through the website, which is very short. So I'm going to be very also short on the description here. And then we go to, 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 to Gitpod where I prepare a few things for us to see, right? The main thing, there are a lot of things you can do with, with Wave. I picked a few of them for us in the, in the short time frame we have today to go through and so you can have an idea about the amazing things that you can do with Wave. So with Wave, you can build on the fly and you can deliver these on the fly build uh, container images. So what does it mean? So you probably are aware you're probably aware that the best way to use containers with Nextflow most of the time is to have a single container image per process. So instead of having a single uh, container image for the whole pipeline, we choose to have one image for every process. So this means this, this, this images, they are, they are light, they are easy to pull, they are easy to push, they are easy to start and, and easy to, to, to stop both easy and fast, right? Because they're really light containers. They only have like a single application or a few applications. It's very light. And because it's so simple, it's easy to debug. So if you run into some issues in your pipeline, if you have one container for the whole pipeline, there are too many softwares, too many pieces that can go wrong, right? So by having small and simple container images for every process, it's easy to debug, it's quick to pull. And you may think that maybe pulling is not an issue, but imagine you have a thousand samples you're gonna use a cloud uh, cloud computing. You're gonna create virtual machines for every task. You may have to pull a container a thousand times. So if it takes a minute or five seconds to pull or to to run or to stop, this makes a difference in the end. Mostly because not only time is also money you're spending, right, on cloud computing or time in your plus infrastructure and so on. 
So the idea here is that instead of uh, having to pre-build your images, you can build them on the fly. You can give instructions to Wave through Nextflow in several different ways. There are many ways you can do that. And Wave, you build this, this, this container image for you, provision that, and deliver it to you so that you can run your container, this recently built on the fly container. Okay, so the idea is to simplify pipeline development because you don't have to worry about building your images anymore. You just work with Nextflow and Wave with Nextflow to create your image. Uh, you can improve pipeline performance because your your containers can be optimized, right, for platform. So if you're running on ARM, like Apple Silicon, it's going to build the container for Apple Silicon. If you are like uh, you have like Gravitron on AWS, right? If you are using Intel, you see it, it identifies the platform, the target platform is going to build the container image for that platform optimized. No emulation will be required. So you can you have an improved in pipeline performance. You can also authenticate against container registries with centralized credential management. So I think here, um, you probably saw this announcement by Docker where they were saying that uh, soon people will be limited. There will be several limits, right? Uh, and you can think that, okay, so I have to pay for Docker and then I have a better, better rates and so on for limits of pulling and pushing and so on. But if I don't want to pay for Docker, it's the same. Actually, it's not. So as you can see here, anonymous users, so if you just type on your command line, Docker pull some container image, anonymous user will be limited to 100 container pulls per six hours, which is like nothing, right? And free users, which means you are authenticated, even though you are, you are not paying, you're just having a free account and you are authenticated, you're limited to twice the number of container pulls, so 200. Other container registries, not the only Docker Hub, they are starting to work in this direction. So being able to authenticate is, is turning to be a, a crucial thing when you're running your data pipelines. And the fact that all these things are automated, you have like, I don't know, 20,000 tasks. You don't want to authenticate manually or anything like this. So the first interesting thing about Wave is that it can authenticate for you, right? Uh, you can also improve productivity by focusing on pipeline logic, right? You, you only work on your pipeline. You don't worry about... Uh, building your, your, your container or augmenting it or anything like this. And you can have them in a secure regulated environment. So you can maximize portability using content packages and so on. So I will try to be, I will try to stop here. I mean, you can go to the WAVE website and see all these topics here and read with more calm. I will instead take you to this repository, which is github.com slash secure labs slash WAVE dash showcase. Okay. So here you have 11 interesting things you can do. Uh, with, with Wave, I will pick some of them to do it here. So for this, I will focus on the demo. So if at some point I, I am, I'm like going through the time, please let me know when I will stop, okay? Because I think it will be in time, but we never know, right? Okay, so the first thing I would like to mention is, is authenticating, right? So we can go to example, the, the, the folder. Let me turn off this here. Okay, so example one. So in every example, you have this run.sh uh, file, which basically shows you what the, the command you should run, which is this, which is basically next low run demo.nf with wave. So the same way when you have with tower, with wave, and so on, you have uh, with wave here. So I created a tower access token specifically uh for this let me get it here so that we can also see on tower when things are ran right it's a bit slow i think Let me go. I'm using Tower Cloud. Uh, 
gonna get this access token. So we can do next little run demo NF with wave and with power. Or I'm gonna open this demo NF so we can see. So you see here we have oh that's not gonna work because it's it's Paolo's uh private container. But you see there's a container here which is private, right? And I cannot authenticate to this one because it's Paolo's not mine. But the thing is when I simply run this pipeline with the container which you, you it's required authentication and I don't do anything but say with wave it's going to use my tower token to try to authenticate to the credentials that I added at tower and by doing that automatically we don't have to do anything next all we will we'll be able to pull this container right so this is the, the first example so basically don't do anything you just do with wave and because you have your tower access token configured like it did, like the export tower underline access underline token, it will be able to authenticate and pull the container, which is in a private container registry, right? This container two example is more interesting. It's uh, building and delivering um, a modern container. So let's see how the folders are here. So you see, I have a demo NF again, which is just importing a module called hello and calling this module, right? So let's go and see the, the source code of this guy. Modules, foo, main, but an F. And here's a very simple module. Hello, how say hello summit, right? The interesting thing here is that in my nectar.config, you know, I have Docker enabled true, and I'm gonna run this with wave. Right? I'm gonna just I'm going to run this with Wave. And it's going to work just fine. I'm going to say the hello world uh, that we saw. It's pulling the, the NF tower, NF wave. going to have the tower, oh, a token. It's going to take a few seconds because it's building a container image. It's pulling it and running it. But then I want to show you something. Okay, I'll say. The interesting thing is that when you look at the module here, uh, you're going to see a Docker file. And you see this Docker file, uh, it's based on Alpine. It is installing Calse. That's why Calse is working here because in Alpine, in this container image, we don't have Calse. But this is the, the whole Docker file. That's how we know that it was built and everything else. If you do a Docker image here, you see this uh, wave.secure.io. This is the container image that was built with wave and pulled by this machine so that we can use it, right? It's really annoying this thing and I can I don't remember how to turn it off. Oh it's here I think. Okay, good Grammarly. Oh great. Okay. So in the second example, uh, chat or something. Okay, at the end I was answer some questions. So the interesting thing here thing here with this example too, and we can even uh let me try to do like Docker one STI Alpine Cosse. And you see that it's gonna I don't have the Alpine image but they have this executable file not found. So I'm proving to you that in the Alpine container image, we don't have the cow save. So we have to, this Docker file was really built, right? And how does Wave know what Docker file to build? So basically inside the modules folder, the full folder for this module, we have a Docker file. So automatically as a default for Wave, it will find this Docker file to build. There's no container uh, instruction here on main. But because there was a Docker file in this folder, it will add here container blah 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 that we pulled, right? So that's the, the 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 most straightforward of using Wave. You have a pipeline, you have your modules, and you want every module to have its container image, which is the default. But you don't pre-build your image. You just create Docker files in these folders, and Wave will build these images for you. That's the example too, right? It built, it gave it to me, and I, next low, the next low integration with Wave, which is this NF plugin that appeared at some point, we coordinate everything so that we don't even have to look at it. It will just build and load and everything else. The other example, which is very nice, is example four. This one is about building based on Conda. So the run command is still the same. Run here we have RNA seek dash nf, which is an next flow next dash io dash uh, slash. So it's this pipeline that you can find on GitHub. Okay. 
We don't have to say GitHub here because it's the default. If it was GitLab or something else, we would have to add it before. So the interesting thing here is that if you look at nectar.config, you see this scope here, this configuration scope called Wave, and the strategy is Conda. So because of that, it won't look for Docker files. If you look for the Conda directives that we have, and we based on this Conda directives, build a container image. So on this Conda packages. So basically, you don't have to, you don't have to create a Docker file. You just say what Conda packages are there, and Wave will be able uh, to to find it, the dependencies and everything else. It takes a while uh, because it's going to resolve the, 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 the Conda dependencies and going to build the environment and run the container, create a container image and everything else. So I won't do a demo here. But just, just bear in mind that just by just saying the strategy is Conda, that you find the Conda directives in your pipeline and you build images for them. So if you didn't do anything related to containers in your pipeline, you just use Conda, by using this wave strategy and adding dash read dash wave in the command line, it will be the container images and your pipeline will run on Docker, okay? Uh, the last example is about augmenting containers. That's very, very, very nice. It's one thing that I like a lot. So this means that basically the command is gonna be the same again. So next flow run demo.nf dash read dash wave. The interesting thing here now is that we have our demo.nf, like always, it's the main.nf, right? It's the pipeline script. We have a modules folder. And here we have foo again, and we have the main.nf. But we have another tree here, which is resources, usr, local, bin, say, dash hello.sh. We have the next config again. Let's open my nextflow.config, saying Docker enable. That's fine. The interesting thing here is that if we look at the demo.nf, it's just importing the foo. So it's just a module I'm importing and running this module again. Nice. Let's open the, the main nf of this module. So it's using container. It's using this container, which is very light, contains bash. And it's running say dash hello. OK, so let's run this bash container. Let's get inside it. So it's not here. I'm pulling it, downloading, and it's going to run the container. That's why this, this run command minus ti does it. It gives me an interactive terminal, right? So I'm here. I'm going to do say hello, Sage. No command, no file found. Let's do like this. Okay, so I'm proving to you that local being here, this say hello doesn't exist. Okay, and I can even do that to show to you it doesn't exist, right? So no such file directory. So I'm proving to you that this container here, it won't work. This task will fail because I'm telling it to use this container and to run this binary file here, this best script, which doesn't exist. The, 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 the thing is, because I have this resources folder inside the module folder, Wave knows that, you know, we're going to use this container image, but I want to augment it. I want to add something to it. I will create a new container image, which is just like the one we are specifying here, but I want to add another layer with this binary. And I want to place it in USR local bin. I want to place this file there. Because this is in the path, this will become executable, right? So I'll leave the container. Oh. The folder. Maybe showcase. Example five, as we were showing before, that's the, the research, the, the restructure, right? So we're gonna run now the same way we were doing before, just with wave. I'm gonna clear the screen so we can see it better. And this is supposed to fail, right? Because I showed to you that this binary here, this script, it doesn't exist in this container image. But actually what's happening, as we saw, is that it's going to build this, it's going to pull this container image. It's going to augment it with another layer, which is this script that we saw in resources, USR, local bin. And then I'm able to run it works. Hello world, right? Which is what inside this modules, full uh, resources, USR, local bin. 
So this script basically says, echo hello world. Okay, so how can I prove to you that this happens? If you do Docker images, you're gonna see all these images here. You're gonna get this guy. Uh, say hello. And now it works. But you see, we did it before, like a few minutes ago. What is it? And it didn't work. It said no file directory. So you see, this container image, it's indeed this one, but augmented a layer with the script that we can do here. So I, I'm not sure if it's clear to you how important this is. So we have a technology that's here for Nextflow called Fusion that makes you run pipelines on the cloud, spending less money, faster, and all these things. And Fusion makes uh, buckets look like they're shared file systems, right? The issue, the, the issue with that is that in every time you run a container and you, and you try to use Fusion, you need the Fusion driver, right? You need the Fusion client to connect to the shared file system and, and to manage all these things. So this augmentation here works exactly there. Every time you have a container and you're using Fusion, it will augment it to include the Fusion client. The same thing, like maybe you work in a, in a company that you have some authentication software that you have to add to every container. You don't have to rebuild all your containers from scratch. You can just use the container images you have and use Wave to augment a layer with your authentication software. Or maybe there is this amazing container by someone. They have some tools installed or BWA, but you need to add some tools. You need to add a second tool in this container. You can augment it with Wave. So Wave allows you to get these already built container images and augment them with new tools or new things you want. And you don't have to do it manually. Next was going to do that for you. Uh, so as I said, you can come to this GitHub repository and see all these nice examples. There are some very, very nice examples, in, even with Fusion, with Kubernetes, uh, interactive debugging of remotely executed tasks. It's very, very nice. So many things you can come here and look by yourself. And every folder has this uh, readme, get into more detail about what's happening, right? The run at sh, which is the exact command you have to type, the nextflow.config, among other things. So with that, I will stop. I'm sorry if I went over the time, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, there are indeed already questions. Um, I'm going to read the ones in the chat. But after that, uh, anyone is also allowed to just unmute themselves. Uh, but for now, let's go to the questions that are already there. Uh, first one is, what are the differences between Docker containers and Wave containers for high-performance computing workloads? And what are the advantages of Wave? So uh, Wave containers, they are not a different type of technology. They're like Docker, Docker containers, Singularity containers, or Podman containers. Wave is a functionality that adds to these guys. So currently, Wave supports Singularity, supports Docker, I think Podman. So it's a new technology. It was released last year in October in the previous Nextflow Summit. So there's still a way to go. But it already supports, I think, Podman, Singularity, and Docker. I'm not sure. Which means that it's not a specific different type of container. You just work with these container images you have with these technologies, and Wave is going to add functionality. It's going to make it easier for you, right? So it's not different. And the advantages for workloads, well, the augmentation is a very interesting one. If you want to, uh, if you want to build containers easily, if you want to augment containers easily, Wave is going to help you a lot. And because it's built by the architecture, let's say you you have a cluster. I think it's Gravitron on AWS that you have ARM. And I think the tenth, one of the top hundred uh, supercomputers in the world right now, it's using ARM, which is a different architecture, right? So if in your HPC you don't have Intel. And the container image was built by for Intel. I mean, you you can build your one your own with Wave, and it will allow you to be target at this platform. And then there are no emulation will be required, and it will be faster. Or the other way around, your your HPC is like is a regular Intel architecture HPC, but the container image that Adam built, for example, is an ARM. So it, there, it, that will require emulation. So you don't need that. You don't want that. Want that. So you can build automatically with Wave your container image specifically for your architecture, which is going to make it faster. Not only faster, you know, sometimes it hangs. Emulating containers is not an easy thing. That's why people don't, don't usually run uh, pipelines on macOS, because even though it works, there's the emulation. It not only takes longer, sometimes it hangs. It's very unpredictable. So you should always have containers 
for the, the target platform that you're using. So with Wave, that's it. It's like the, the flexibility that you can focus on your pipeline logic instead of having to fight with creating containers and all these things, documentation. I think that that's, that's the thing. There was kind of a follow-up question. It's part two of the question by Simon. Um, and uh, specifically focusing on this um, on-the-fly ability. Mm -hmm. So he's also asking, how is the local container construction hampering the reproduce reproducibility aspect? Okay, so the thing is, indeed, it takes a while to build containers. And if you're using Conda, indeed, it's take, it takes a bit longer. Uh, the thing is, there's some cache so that Wave won't build something it's already built. You have the thing about layers. So you can cache layers, even if the whole pipeline is not the same that has already been built. Uh, and you don't rely on Wave necessarily. So you can use Wave to build, but you can ask Wave to, after building the image, pushing it to your personal container registry. It could be a public one like Docker Hub or a private container registry that you have. So you don't depend on Wave. After Wave builds that for you, it can push to your container registry, and then you can use uh, in your pipeline. So there's no unnecessarily rebuilding, right? There's this cache. Let me see more of the question, make sure I got everything. Uh, yeah, well, there's more questions. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It seems that local rebuilding of a container or a Conda environment is very expensive, given that each, each user will build their own platform dependent version of it instead of sharing one pre built container. Yeah, that's what the one that was answering, actually. Sorry. So that's the thing there's the cache, so you won't be rebuilding multiple times, right? Mm -hmm. And if you have like the same image, I mean, you can share previewed images if it's what people want. I mean, if there's Intel image with everything I want, I won't, I won't use Wave. I will just use this container image. But if I want to change something, if I want to review it, if I want to augment it, then Wave is going to help me. So Wave is not supposed to replace everything regarding containers. It's just to be used when you have to fight with them. If you have this bio-container image, you just add to the container process directive in your pipeline, and that's great. That's the usual case, right? But if you need to review it, if you need to... Re Review to a different platform. If you want to change something, if you want to augment that, then Wave is very useful for you. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a container image that already exists, sometimes you have some Conda packages that, like in bio containers, you have a container for every Conda recipe. But what if you want, if you want two Conda packages in a very specific version, and there is no bio container for that, bio container container image for that? What do you do? You can use Wave to build that for you, so that you don't have to write your own Docker file or open a PR with help for someone to build that and so on. Mm -hmm. Good. Then uh, moving on to the next question, Matthias is asking, can Wave also build uh, signed and encrypted containers suitable for confidential computing on Kubernetes? I'm not sure, Matthias. That's, that's one thing. I think so, but I won't say yes because I'm, I'm not sure. So every question you guys may have in the future, and even this one that I couldn't properly answer, there's the Wave-containers uh, channel on the next floor Slack, and it's a great place to ask these questions. So this one about Kubernetes, I don't, I don't know specifically. I'm sorry. Hmm. Then the last question in the chat uh, from Yoon. Uh, can we can Wave be used independently from Nextflow? Yeah. So you have a command line interface called Wave Lit. It's on GitHub. Uh, Wave L L I T. I'm gonna type because we always think it's Wave Lit, but it's Wave Lit, right? So this command line interface, yeah, great, Manish. Thank you. Thanks. So by using this command line interface, Wave Lit, you can use Wave independent from Nextflow. And, and that's the idea. Even though Nextflow has a very nice integration with Wave through the NF-Wave plugin, you're not tied to Nextflow to use Wave. You can use Wave manually. Right? I mean, you can you can do what Nextflow is doing on, on, on the behind, right? So you can use Wave without having to use Nextflow. Yes. Mm, then I also have a question. Uh, is okay. Wave um, possible to be used? Free or is there is there a fee? For it's free. No, no, it's okay. free for now. It's free for now. Like the wave uh, using wave, of course, it's free. Like you you have the wave backend, but it, it's free. Okay, cool. Are there any more questions from the audience that have not been asked and answered? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just one thing. Last year in October in the Nexo Summit, we had the release of Wave, as I said. It was very nice because Paolo put me in charge of pressing the merge button. So during his talk. 
I pressed the merge button and then Wave was public, right? So it was a very great summit. It was very, very nice. We heard of Wave, Fusion, and so many things. And in October this year, we have again the next World Summit in Barcelona, right? And this year, we are also going to have it in Boston in November. So I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to say that come to the next World Summit and some new things are going to be shared. So I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, there is one more question. Uh, do you have any docs about encrypted containers? I don't. I'm sorry. Maybe it was for Matthias, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, if there are no more questions from the audience at this point, then I would like to thank you for the talk and this very nice thank discussion you. at the end. I would also like to thank the audience and of course, as usual, the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our bite-sized talks. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.